Okay, so this section we're going to look at applying the time constant we just calculated to discharge curves and looking at the formulas that we have for decay constants of capacitors. Okay, so this formula we've already played with, just the simple charge formula through exponential decay, where RC, that value RC over here, is your time constant, the time taken for the charge to decay to 37% of its initial value. So if I had 10 coulombs to start with, at 3.7 coulombs, the time taken to get there on the graph would be my first time constant, which happens to be resistance in the circuit times capacitance in the circuit. Okay, that product is my time constant. Two times that would be my second time constant, so double that value. And if I plugged all that in here, negative two, I would get 1.35 coulombs or 13.5 percent three time constants is five percent charge okay so learning how to play around with that formula and understanding how to graph it if i was able to plot these three points i could then easily make a curve to graph the exponential decay of charge in a capacitor so how do i convert the above graph into a current time graph so i got charge i have my time constant how can I just look at this graph and immediately convert it into a current time graph, so current over time? Well, there's a couple ways I can do it. If, as long as I knew, if I know the capacitance of my capacitor, that's great. I can apply a formula to calculate my current. And if I know my time constant, I can calculate my current. I'll show you that in a second. So in the case where if you know your capacitance, you just use the capacitance formula. So your initial charge your initial charge divided by the voltage, or sorry, divided by the capacitance of the capacitor in the circuit would give me my voltage in the circuit or the voltage applied. And we know that voltage divided by my resistance in that circuit would give me current. So as long as, if I go up here and I look at this, as long as I know the value of my resistance and the value of capacitance, okay, uh, and the value of total charge, I can then do a bunch of calculations to calculate the current that is going into that circuit. Okay, so at that point, if I know my initial current, I can then, third, I can then draw the graph of current over time by applying the rules of time constants. So 37% would be the value of the first time constant, 14% would be the value of the second, and 5% would be the value of the third, and it would decay like that. All right. Another way of finding <clears throat> the current is using this little trick. If I know my initial charge, so 10 coulombs, and I know my time constant, it's given to me in, in, in the question, I can just take 10 coulombs divided by the time constant, and that would give me my initial current, which is kind of strange. How does that work? How does, how does this work? How does my initial charge divided by the time constant give me current? Well, if I do some substitution, my initial charge is my capacitance times the voltage, okay? And my time constant is resistance times capacitance, so that cancels out. I'm left with V over R. V over R is current, okay? So that's a really nice trick, and I can see them putting that onto an exam where they give you a graph with the time for the time constant and the charge, and they ask you to convert it immediately without telling you capacitance. This is the only way you'd be able to do that. Another thing we can do is calculate half-life. In, in nuclear physics, there's a lot of similarities. Half-life would be the time it takes for something to de decrease by half, so in an exponential decay. So the half-life of a capacitor is the time taken for charge on the capacitor to decay by half, so that's that 50% point. So what can I do with that? Well, I can plug all that information into that Q equation, where Q over Q0 will be 0.5. Right, so my half-life, Q over Q0 is 0 0.5. So at 0 0.5 is equal to E negative T1 half, that's the time it takes to get to that halfway point, divided by my time constant. Okay, using that and rearranging the equation, if I want to get rid of E, I got an ln this side, negative flips that over, makes the reciprocal, so ln of 2 is equal to T1 half over RC, ln 2 times my time constant would give me my half-life, the half-time. Or if I look at the graph and I see the half-time, I read it off of the graph, let's say that's two seconds, 
how would I, how would I use that value? If I read the half-life and I know my initial charge, how can I use that directly to measure the decay constant or, or whatnot? Okay, well, I can then say the half-life that I measured in my graph, T1 half, divided by ln2 would give me my time constant. So T1 half divided by 0 0.693 would give me a quick way of measuring the time constant in a capacitor equation. So this is an imp important thing to write down on a cue card as well. So you have multiple tools to use when you're analyzing a discharge curve to give you important information about a circuit. I can use this information to measure the time constant. And then the time constant is the resistance times the capacitance. So if I knew the resistance in a circuit, but I didn't know the capacitance, I can use my time constant that I measured from my graph to measure the capacitance of a, of a capacitor in a circuit, or to measure the resistance in a circuit. So it's a pretty useful tool. So in summary, there are many ways to find time constant. The first way is to read it from the graph. When it gets to 37%, read the time, and that's the time constant. Okay, I can calculate the time constant from any data points on the graph, my original charge, my actual charge at that time, and if I plug all those numbers in, I'll be able to calculate my time constant. Then we have this idea, my, initial, my maximum charge in the capacitor divided by my initial current will give me my time constant. All right, and the last one, or last few, if I take the half-life of that decay curve divided by ln2, that'll give me my time constant. And the last thing, if I just multiply my resistance times my capacitance, I can get my time constant. So I keep on saying time constant because it's a very important aspect of RC circuits, circuits that contain capacitors and resistance in it. All right, and I should be able to play around with that. If I measure my time constant, I can then find these variables. If I have these variables, then I can find out how much charge I have at a certain amount of time or current or voltage. Okay, so the important equations we have Q is equal to QOE negative. Okay, I is equal to IOE negative. And V is equal to VOE. So they're all related. All of these are related. And you have all these in your data booklet. Okay, and then we also know that T one half divided by LN two is equal to RC. That could be an important equation that you could then use to calculate the time constant, which you can then plug into these formulas to calculate whatever you want. So there's a lot of problems in SOCOS that allow you to play around with these relationships and read graphs to determine uh, how you can apply everything that I showed you in this video.